Hey YouTube, welcome to TCTN. We're not going to do chapstick this time. I already did my base face. What I have on is the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. Um, on top of that, two pumps of the Estee Lauder Stay in Place Makeup. On top of that, two drops of the Bashia Sabaki Beauty Oil. Mix that all in, put that all over. For a concealer for here, for this area, the Bright Future Gel Serum Concealer. Um, from Sephora. So the basic things that you guys always see me use. I set under my eyes with the Lancome Long Time No Shine Powder because I'm getting pasty because <laughs> winter is here. I use the Cashew um, Fenty Setting Powder and for this area here and under my jawline and the perimeter of my face I used the Fenty Nutmeg and I'm still looking a little pasty so I'm not sure I think I'm going to put on some honey really quick. Uh, Bordeaux Brat for blush and also the NARS Sin for blush. So I think I'm going to put on some honey just to put some more of my natural golden color back into my face. Some days I just look really pasty and I do know that the lights sometimes change how we look in person. In person, I don't look pasty, but <laughs> I'm looking at casket ready on camera. But that is the lighting. So I don't know if that helped. I don't know if I should put a little more of the nutmeg on, but then in person, I'll look too dark because it is a really dark powder on me. So I'm going to leave this like this. Um, so what we're going to do for lips, oh, brows, I used the Fenty Brow MVP. Instead of chapstick, we're going to go in with confetti, the gloss bomb, because I'm not sure what my eye look is going to look like. So I'm just going to go in with something really, I don't even want to say neutral. I think this is empty. What? So this is just like a shine. It's really a no color, but I do like that it brings out the natural color in my lips. And so this is something I can use regardless of what eyeshadow look I do. And if I just don't want to use chapstick. And it's very moisturizing. So I meant to prime my eyes prior to the video. The Fenty eyeshadow primer. This is going to be another look with... Um, I have a hard time talking and doing makeup at the same time. And yes, I can walk and chew gum at the same time. Um, <laughs> surprising fun fact, I guess. Another look with the Natasha Denona Lila palette, and it's going to be a very easy look. I am a very easy, sounds like I'm a hoe. Um, I like simplistic looks. <laughs> Where are my brushes? <laughs> and so, and being 50, I don't want, you know, to walk around looking like a disco ball. I want my makeup to be age appropriate, but I also want it to look nice. And I do like for my eyeshadow to pop. I don't think complexion products should be noticeable other than your face looks smoother, your face looks uniform as far as the coloring is concerned. Um, I don't even wear highlights because I do have natural highlights and we all do. And for me, I don't know if it's just me or maybe I just haven't found the right highlighter, but years ago when I was experimenting with the various highlighters, they just seemed to add a textured look to my skin and I didn't like that. And so I got to a point where I said, I'm going to stop experimenting and just not use highlighters at all. And I'm okay with that. Um, I was in Sephora, this was years ago. And actually it was when Fenty first came out and Trophy Wife was all the rave. And the Sephora person was saying, oh yeah, this highlighter is really light. I said, well, I don't want a blinding highlighter. And there was this young girl in there. And I know I look younger than my 50 years, but she, I think she was either in like her early 20s or late teens. And she's like, oh, when I turn my head, I want to blind people. And I'm like, why would you want to blind somebody? Because then they can't even look at you or talk to you if they're just like, I can't see you. And so it was really... <laughs> And I don't, and I know her, I, well, I think her intention was she just wants to be noticed. 
but I don't want to be noticed because I have a disco ball on my face. You know what I mean? And I think that might be something that comes with age where our preference and what we want to be known for changes. And so I just want to be known to just be a nice person that looks halfway decent for my age, not because, oh my gosh, you know, she blinds me when she turns her eyes. <laughs> so as, we, as I said, the Natasha Denona <laughs> Leela palette, this is a really simple look. I have it written out, and I think I've done this look before. I'm going to take um, Nude Mauve, this shade here, above the crease and then into the crease. Really as a transition shade, because I, I take my crease shade above my crease, because when I look at you, you can't see my crease. And so... <laughs> I don't say in the crease because it's not in the crease. That's why I say above the crease, even though it is my crease color. For most people, this area would be, if they're not hooded, like if their eyes are this way, this would be their transition shade area. But I don't want to say that because for me, it's not a transition shade. It's my crease shade. And I do hope that makes sense. If you guys um are a little finicky with terminology like that like what i just described let me know below like would you still just say this is my transition shade or would you say this is above my crease even though it is your crease shade so let me know about that i'm going to try to make this quick this is going to be real time for my eyeshadow looks and i do understand that a lot of people do like, okay, this is here, that's there. And I like those videos too because I can just do them really quick. However, I think it may mislead some people when we speed things up in tutorials and they're thinking, oh, that's a quick, easy look. And it really took us maybe like 25 minutes. This is not going to take me 25 minutes. Um, <laughs> but that's my purpose in liking to do real-time eyeshadow look sometimes and even though with some people I think they may be boring but for other people I think that they're helpful if they're new or they want to actually just see the process I like this brush because even though it's floppy this is called drawing blend drawing let me start over this is called pro and drawing blending brush and I like it because with my hooded eyes and because I have extra skin here, if I just go in and start moving, my brush is going to move my skin. And so as you saw, when I first put this on, I laid it down and then I go through and blend it. And also with the Fenty primer, it is a tacky primer. So if I just go in and start blending, my brush is going to skip because of the extra skin that I have that's going to move beneath the brush. And what you saw me just do prior to explaining all of that was taking more of the color. <clears throat> and because this is tapered, it's really good for this. I can just add more color here where I didn't get the color placed before. And so that is what that is going to look like. And it is also good to do the windshield wiper motion once the color is down and you have it blended where you want to just further blend and to take it up further into this area, which would actually be the transition area versus this I consider still my crease color. So I'm going to take a smaller blending brush. Well, not smaller, but more detail. Well, yeah, a smaller tapered blending brush. So this is the difference. This was the drawing blending brush. This is just a crease brush. So I'm going to take the crease brush and I'm going to go in with that same color and now I'm going to put that directly into the crease. And they say, you know, don't raise your eyebrows to see where your crease is. Just look down. But because I've been doing my eyeshadow for however long I've been doing it, I know where the shadow is going to go when I make certain faces. But if you're new, you may not want to do that. If you're new to makeup and you're not sure where it's going to go, then you may not want to raise your eyebrows. But if I were to just, like, I don't even see my crease. But when I look down, I can barely see it. But actually, that feels really weird and uncomfortable. Because <laughs> I could feel it rubbing over, like, my eyeball socket. And looking down is interfering with my vision. <laughs> so I do actually just prefer to raise my brows and put it directly into the crease because it is going to go directly into the crease when you do this 
with your eyebrows raised. But that's something that you learn after you've been putting on makeup for a while. You know where the color is going to go. Now we're going to take this top shade here using the same brush. I am going to wipe it off a little bit. And this is, what color is this? <laughs> Nude Vino. So I'm going to wipe the brush off a little bit. I have a cloth here. And I'm going to go into that shade and put that directly into the crease just to deepen the crease. And again, this is real time, so I'm trying to remember to keep talking so that it's just not silent <laughs> while I'm doing my face. And so you see how that just deepened that. When I close my eyes or when I blink, you can see the darker color. Sometimes I do take my above the crease shade up here, this color here, a little bit darker. Sometimes I feel like doing that and then like sometimes I don't. I think it just depends on what I'm going for for that day. I'm wiping this brush off again and I'm going to go back in with that first shade and I am just going to add more. Oh, did y'all see that puff of shadow? I'm just going to add more above the crease. This pan does have some kick up, kick back in the pan, which I don't mind because I don't tend to have fallout with these shades. So I don't mind the kick up in the pan. And I'm taking this up higher because I do have so much space up here. And I know some people don't and then some people do. So you just have to figure out like what look you like for you and where you want your colors to go. When I first started doing my eyeshadows, I was doing my highlight and highlighting this entire area. And then it just made like this whole part just look really bright and shimmery. And when I look back on those pictures, I'm like, okay, that didn't look right. I'm going to go back to that first <laughs> brush without adding any additional color and just further blend that out, that additional color that I just laid there in that area. So on the lid, we're going to use Livid. Is this Livid? We're going to use this shade here. I really feel like I did this look before. I'm going to take a flat shader brush. Which one do I want to use? I want to use an hourglass brush. So this is the Hourglass Flash Shader Brush, and we're going to take that shade. Is this one supposed to be the one? Yeah. <laughs> and just placing that on the lid. And again, I am raising my eyebrows because if I don't, I can't get to the lid. And even if I look down, I'm only getting the lid closest to my lash line. And I know some people do, like, raise their lid, but it's like, I don't... I don't want to touch my eyeshadow because I don't... I, I For some reason, I think it'll interfere with what the shadow looks like if I'm pushing or pulling up my lid because you have to put your finger on top of the eyeshadow and then you're lifting it and honestly I don't see that it interferes with placement but my mind just tells me that for me because I'm just weird um my mind tells me that that's what would happen if I did that <laughs> So I'm still just applying more and more of that livid on my lid. I think I'll title this video that I'm livid. And yes, I know my face is starting to sweat for my T-zone area. So that's what that looks like. So I'm going to go in with a pencil brush. Excuse me. <laughs> and what am I doing? I'm going to take this shade. Um what is it called nude vino and I'm going to put that under my lower lash line with this pencil brush and how I do that is I take the brush and I roll it as I'm tapping it into the shadow and I just go straight across in both directions because again I have wrinkles so if I take a brush and sweep straight across back and forth it's just going to move my skin and so that's why I do this this way so I do think this is a good technique for mature skin if you have under eye wrinkles, if you have slightly hooded eyes or just extra space up top. These are the techniques that work for me. And I'm going to brush that off. And I'm going to take amethyst. Which shade is amethyst? Amethyst is this shade here. And so I'm going to take that on a pencil brush and also put that on my lower lash line. So really that first shade under there was just as a base and we're going to put 
amethyst on top of that. I have a Zoom call in 10 minutes. There's a clock over there. That's what I was just looking at. So this is how I do that. There are times when I do go back and forth to blend out. Oh, let me take some of this shine off of here. I know that looks really gross. Well, to me it does. Oh, uh, what am I going to do? Oh, <laughs> that initial brush, I'm not going to add any shadow to it. But because it is a flimsy brush, it doesn't move my skin too much. And so I will go back and forth lightly to help blend out that color. I don't mind a harsh line under here, as long as it's not like a black. And so sometimes I don't even do what I'm doing now because I don't mind how that looks. And I think that is it. No, inner corner highlight, which I always don't do, but this shade, I'm sorry, this look I have it written down. Magnolia. Which one is Magnolia? I always say Magnolia is not. It's, ma it's magnetic. This shade right here. So I'm going to take this shade here as an inner corner highlight with a flat angled brush. And I'm going to pop that right here. Ooh, I didn't realize. That. Why is this the inner corner highlight? Did I pick the right shade? Like that? Oh, I don't even like that. Why is that the shade for the inner corner highlight? That is not a highlight. Like, that is just, like, oh, my gosh. Y'all, man, I don't like that. <laughs> that is not an inner corner highlight. That is just too bold to be a highlight. So, what we're going to do is... <laughs> Yeah, that's that, no, no. So what we're gonna do is, <laughs> I do have another one of those hourglass shader brushes, if I can find it really quickly. Here it is right here. And I'm gonna take that same shade, that inner corner highlight, that's not a highlight. And I'm gonna just put that like on the first half of the lid, cause that color by itself just, I do not like that at all. And I don't know what to do to fix it. And I have a Zoom call, so I don't really have time to wash my face. So you guys are going to see me try to work this out. Which means this video is going to be longer than I thought. So I might edit out some of the beginning of when I was saying what my base products are that are on my face. Or I'll just leave it long so that you guys can really see. When you do something you don't like, how do you fix it? I already have a look posted half and half where one half is sort I think this shade or maybe this one. No, you know what? I think it might. I don't know. But one shade is like the reddish. It's not one shade. One half of the lid is a reddish color and the other half is a purplish color. So I'm wondering if that's what these colors are. Are these the shades that I use? I'm speaking gibberish because I'm trying to brush. I'm starting to sweat again. I'm trying to figure out how to fix this. <laughs> I'm going to wipe that brush off and actually I'm, no, I'm going to use a different brush. I'm going to use a different shader brush. This one, you guys remember these silver handle Sephora brushes? Oh my gosh. I still have a few. I loved them. I'm going to take that first shade, which is Nude Mauve. And I'm going to put that in the inner corner. I'm, I, my thinking is to tone that down. Hopefully it does, because that is just way too bright. I still don't like it, but I'm liking that it's not as bright as it was. This Zoom call, they're going to be looking at me like, okay, she's looking really crazy today. As opposed to any other day. <laughs> Okay, that did tone it down, but it's still, woo. I might take some concealer, and but then that might mess up the rest of it. So as you see, I'm trying to blend this up because I'm noticing it is like really close to my nose and to 
my brow area. This is a mess. <laughs> like, what look are you going for? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I need to do something else. I'm going to take per se. Like, I am just desperate right now. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put that there. And this is a cooler tone shade. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, gosh. What am I going to do? Do I have any Q-tips over here? I do somewhere. Yeah, this is not... <laughs> it was all good until that shade. All right, let me find a Q-tip. If you guys are still here, thank you. We're going to work this out. Zoom calls in less than five minutes. And I am... This is not looking right. I'm going to end up washing my face before this Zoom call. <laughs> We're just putting on my glasses to try to camouflage <laughs> this. <laughs> but I am thinking it's looking better with removing some of this shadow. This is a dry Q-tip. There is nothing on here. And because I'm sweating, this is like my third Q-tip. I don't want to... I don't want my sweat to start to interfere with trying to remove <laughs> the shadow because then it's just going to make the shadow look darker because sweat is wet. So how is that? I think that is better. I am still desperate. I'm going to go back in <laughs> with this blending brush after I get this sweat off my nose. I did not put on setting spray today. Sometimes it helps and sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to go back with that first shade <laughs> and dust that up here. I think that is a lot better. I'm not going to edit any of this out because I want you guys to see that when you make a mistake, if you don't want to just wash your entire face and start over, I like that now this is how you can fix it if you have time to fix it if it's quicker just to wash it then that may be something you want to just do but yeah i'm gonna leave this because i've seen videos where people didn't like the look and they're like oh i had to wash it off um there's a gap right here so what do i do with that hmm huh. Hmm, do I want to take that magnetic color? No, I'm going to take live, not live it. Um, shoot, I'm picking up the wrong color with the wrong brush. I'm going to take, <laughs> uh, I am, I'm going to take live it again. Which brush did I use for that? I have like so many brushes here that I've used. I'm going to take live it again and put that there. And hopefully I'll still like this look. Because <laughs> this is what it's going to be. So I am just taking that again all over the lid. And this is what we're going to be working with. I think they leave the room open for like 10 minutes and then they close it. And so I'm going to need to hurry up and do what I'm going to do. <laughs> before I get locked out of the Zoom call. I do want to put on liner. Okay, yeah, I am liking this better. Still looking a little janky, but it's better. I'm gonna put on. <laughs> I'm gonna put on liner really quick, <laughs> and I'm not even gonna do mascara. I am so retarded because I keep forgetting I have a handheld mirror over here, and I'm using the standing mirror that's down here. So that's why I got really close. I could have just stayed back where I was and just used the handheld mirror. I'm just rushing right now, so I'm not really thinking clearly. Do I ever really think clearly? Probably not. You guys who have been here before have probably picked up on that by now. Thank you for being here if you still are. I know that this is a long video. I am almost done. I am really having trouble seeing, so I'm hoping this liner is looking okay. 
and I'm laughing like it's funny. I probably look like a clown by the time I'm done. And if so, did I get too much? Did I go too high up here? I cannot see. I sure did. I went too high on this side. Now I gotta even that out. How's that looking? Uneven. That's how I was looking. So let me go thicker over here uh, because I'm having trouble seeing. So. So this is what we're working with. This is what we got. I'm gonna take another Q-tip. I gotta get to the scroll because my eyes are tearing. I wanna do one more thing real quick. My inner rims, that was the Lorac um, front of the, <sighs> front of the line pro in black. I'm going to take Urban Decay 24 seven water line pencil and they only have one color in this that I know of and this is Legends. I'm going to put that on my water line. This does not irritate my water line which is why I keep using it even though if I put it on early in the day I do uh, think to touch it up but I don't because the outsides water the outsides of my eyes tear and it erases some of the color and I find that with whatever um, liner I put on my water line it always disappears even though it says it'll last long it might be like an hour and then I'll look in the mirror and it's like oh there's no color there and my eyes are already tearing so I'm going to use my q-tip again do I need a clean one I do I don't think I've used this many Q-tips in the eye look a long time. What do you guys think of this eye look? Through all the <laughs> drama, the fiasco, do you think it turned out okay? And so I was going to title this Easy Eyeshadow Look for Mature Lids. Um, and even though it was easy, the mistakes and all of that made it seem complicated. But how do you think it turned out? Leave your comments below. Thank you for watching. You'll see me in the next video. I need a haircut. <laughs> Bye.